Hello everybody. So uh, what we're going to do is take a little bit of a detour in our work on our um, simple REST server service and we're going to actually write a client. So we've been using the DHC client uh, built into Chrome, the Chrome plugin to do that. But obviously we're going to get to a point where we need to have a program that can actually interact with our REST services. So Today we're just going to start that process by writing a little simple console application to access our REST service and we'll demonstrate post, put, delete, and get. So to start that off, the first thing we're going to do is open up our server and we're going to need to run it as we're actually working with our client. So just like we were running it in DHC, we're going to need to run it here. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a copy of our model. So remember our model is our data here, uh, our class that defines what the data is that we um, get from the REST web service and that we provide to the REST web service. So uh, we're going to need this definition in order for everything to work properly. Also, I'm going to start a second version of Visual Studio up. So um, that's where we will build our client. So we'll start that up. And we'll start out by doing a C Sharp console project. So it's going to be a console application. And we are going to call this, um, I forgot. So let's go look. We are going to call this so we'll just call this console rest client. And we'll say OK to that. Now the very first thing we need to do is install um, the web API client library. So to do that under tools, NuGet package manager and then package manager console. We'll let that initialize. And we will start this up with the following install dash package and the name that we're looking for is Microsoft dot ASP.NET.WebAPI.Client. This will install some client libraries that we need. So it'll go out and get that. The new Git package manager is a way for us to easily get um, libraries installed into our project. So the first thing we're going to do is install a duplicate or create a duplicate model class. So this was called person. So I am going to copy this right here. And then going back over to our REST client, we'll right click and select add class. And we are going to call this person. And we'll just add it. And then I'm just going to paste that in. So the reason I did this is so we have an identical um, class as to what we were using on the server side, okay? So the first thing we will do is create and initialize the HTTP client. So going into our program, uh, we'll look up here at the top and there's a few things we need to add. So one is using system.net.http and using system. net .http. Now there's some different ways that you could actually write this client. I'm kind of taking the easy way with some new code that's available in .NET 4, 4.5 and above. There are other ways to do this, but you have to do a lot yourself. So 
I'm going to make this as easy as possible. So we're going to start with run async, wait, and we'll talk a little bit about what this is in just a minute, and then we'll write our method. So when you're calling a REST server, you want to have things be asynchronous. So what that means is you don't want every call that you make to that server to be a blocking call and have to wait to return before the next line of code or the next request can happen. And so um, this example actually is blocking in the, in the console application and in the subsequent lessons we'll look at how we might be able to make it more asynchronous than it is. So right here is where we are going to add our uh, go get the data. However we decide to do that. So it's okay to block this in a console application, to have a blocking call um, in a console application, but uh, we don't we don't typically want to do that. So let's go over and run our server. So let's just fire that up. Now we've been doing this a lot. So let's start up this server. And it's got some specific endpoints just as a reminder. If we can look at these endpoints real quick. Um, let's bring up. We'll go ahead and bring up the DHC client. So our server's now running. So um, let's do a get on this server. So here's a get endpoint. And this gets all the persons. Okay, so I put a lot of data in here. I put a thousand records. That's why it took so long to come back. So I've hit it. I accidentally hit the button twice. So it's going to go get it again. So this is what I mean by blocking. It's going to go off and get all that data. Hopefully, I didn't hit it a third time. Got to be careful about just clicking those buttons. All right. Hopefully we can get this responding for us. You know what, I'm going to relaunch it. It'll be quicker, I think. I've been waiting. So we won't go get all the data again. That's I put, I put a lot of data out there um, to do some testing. So let's go get our app again and try that one more time. And this time we'll actually put an ID on it. So we'll say, go get me the specific one. Okay, that says it's not found. So I know there's a three out there. Let's go get that one. Okay, so there's our return data right here. This is our little uh, model of data. It's going to be returned in JSON. And the client's going to, those client libraries that we installed earlier are going to take care of all the marshalling and unmarshalling with uh, JSON for us. So that's great. So we also have put, get, post, all of those. But we'll start out here with a get, okay? So what we want to watch for is the address that we're going to need. So we're going to need this local host 19885. And so let's go ahead and switch back over to our client that we're building. And let's build that in. So right here, we want to start out by establishing a connection to the server. So the base, the base address of the client is what we want, and that is simply going to be a new URI of HTTP colon slash slash localhost 
colon 19885. That's our base URL that everything's going to go off of. And that just happens to be our, our server address. And then uh, we'll do client. We'll, we'll set this up some default request headers. We haven't really talked about these much, but we're just going to clear the clear this except and then client Oops. so we've cleared them and now we're going to actually set up for the add or set up an or add a new one I should say so it's going to be, we're going to tell it that we want JSON. That's what this is all about. So new media type with quality header value. And it, we want to say application JSON. So this is what tells it that we want JSON back. Okay. All right. So that sets up the request. And the first thing we're going to do is a get. So we'll go get that data just like we just did uh, using DHC. And we're going to start out by putting a little a message here so that we know that we're uh, doing a get. And we start out with an HTTP response message. We want to declare one of those because that's we're going to get that back from our call. And then we're going to simply say await client get async. So this is the this is the asynchronous call that I was telling you about. So we are going to do API slash person slash one. Now let's go just check our DHC. So here's what we're doing is we're doing something like this. We want to do a three there, not a one. Okay. All right, so what that should return is our response code. So if response is success so if we got a success we want to declare a new person object and go get the data so read is async and we are going to do a person So that's our class we declared locally. And then we'll quickly just write some code to write that data out. Now, when I created all these records, I created them all under the same name, so um, you'll have to forgive the fact that it all kind of looks the same. It is different, but they're different unique records. So what we're going to do here is just do a little formatting put some tabs in between things and we've got five values that we need to output so there's three or, I'm sorry there's four and here's five because we're index origin zero and we are gonna put out person whatever the first name was You'll notice it knows about my person object because we created that model locally in this project, just like we did on the other one. And the last name. Let's get the pay rate. Oops. Watch your typing there. And then we have a start date.
there. Close that off with the semicolon. So now we are ready to go ahead and go get that record. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll let this run. And if we don't have any errors, and what we'll do here when we run this is we'll set a breakpoint so we can actually see the, the console output. So let's do that. Let's run it again. Okay, so we're after record three, and here it is right here. And if we go look at it in DHC, we'll notice that's the exact same record that we got here. Okay, so there's a really simple example of how to use client to do git. So now that we have this set up, we'll go through and create the other code to do the other. Um, uh, we'll get everyone, we'll do a post, um, and we'll do a put and a delete so that you can see all of, all of those work. So that's it for this session. We just, we'll do this in two parts. So this first part just did a lot of setup and actually getting it working, and now we're ready to enhance it. So let's stop everything and hope you enjoy this, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks.